Good morning. It's Monday, guys. It's Monday. Monday, Monday, Monday. So we moved this weekend. By, uh, by the time you see this video, we'll have some footage up of that. Um, it was a good move. Went well, but I am broken today. So, um, I got something going on up in my neck, and I'm assuming that was from when we moved the mattress in. Uh, Freaking swear to God, 300 pound mattress. It's one of those uh, memory foam, like 14 inch monstrosities, and so it was pretty difficult to get up in the stairs and around the corner. We forgot the moving straps and it was raining, so we didn't have time to go back and get them, so we had to just kind of muscle it up the stairs. So, tweaked my neck quite a bit. So, I thought today's topic or um, what we would go over today is just kind of some recovery techniques. So, I'm going to take you guys through some foam rolling today. I'm going to take you through some stretching today, and I'm going to take you through one of my favorite recovery techniques called Gua Sha. Um, it's a Eastern medicine, kind of the, the archaic or older term for it, I guess, would be it's a Chinese uh, technique to remove um, toxins, lactic acid, and bad buildup within the, the muscle tissue. It's uh, a lot of, you may have heard of it as like the scraping technique, so we'll take you through that. You can absolutely do it yourself uh, on certain body parts. It kind of sucks, but uh, you can definitely do it. And one of the places that I love to do it is on my forearms because I get so tight. Um, right now, my left arm, I don't know if I'm going to actually be able to grip anything today. So more than likely, today's workout is going to be legs because I really can't. Um, my left and right arms are so tight. So after we get in with our workout and we get home, uh, we'll go ahead and film um, the Gua Sha technique. So sitting here in the parking lot, it is about 8... 812? 812? Yeah, waiting for waiting for the first client to get here. Um, we've got the new software. I'm definitely going to go over that in a video with you guys in the near future. I've just got to completely figure out how it works. Um, so we've got the new software we're going to go over with her. And then uh, we will get in some cardio. And then we're going to get in another client. And then I've got my workout to get done. Then we're going to head home. And I've got a bunch of stuff to get taken care of there. But we'll definitely get the Gua Sha technique in today. So, let's get at it. Matt out. Alright guys, so, talking about recovery today. I um, just wanted to go over with you. Uh, the first part of it is going to be the foam rolling. So, as you can see, I've started with my hamstrings and I'm moving on to my calves here. Um, when it comes to foam rolling, you want to be really careful uh, about the speed that you're going at. If you go too fast, um, more often than not, you're not doing a lot of good. And so, you just want to be real careful that you're actually targeting the muscle, finding those knots in the myofascial tissue. And working them out whether that's moving really slowly or as you can see here what I'm doing is I'm actually finding the knot and I'm applying direct pressure to it but I'm not moving until I feel that pressure sort of release and then I'll move about an inch um, on until I feel that pressure sort of um, release the tension come out of the muscle so I'm not necessarily rolling back and forth super quick I'm actually digging in um, applying a lot of pressure and letting all of that lactic acid and everything kind of move out and that knot to kind of realign itself. So um, usually, um, I had actually just gotten done with a leg workout here, and so we are just working primarily on legs. I'm um, going to see here in a few that I actually do work on my back, um, but right here we're working on the IT band. And again, I'm just using my body weight here, putting pressure in and moving fairly slowly. Once I feel that knot sort of release, as you just saw, I start to move a little bit quicker um, from spot to spot. So moving on to that left IT band here, um, left uh, adductors, um, I'm sorry, abductor muscles, and a little bit of the quad, so I'm kind of just finding that sweet spot here. Um, foam rolling is something that you should be doing, I would recommend every day. Now, realistically, most people don't, and I can't say that I'm the best at saying uh, that I do do it every day, but it's definitely something that I would highly, highly recommend that you're doing as often as you possibly can. So, again, I found... Um, and I remember this quite clearly, right where my vastus lateralis, the outside head of the quad, and the side of my leg kind of meet there in between the hamstring was super, super tight. So I was just getting in there, making sure 
that I got it nice and um, compressed or putting my body weight against the foam roller to get that knot out of there. So the next thing I'm going to move on to is actually the quads themselves, um, the top of the quads. And as you can see here, I'm a little bit bendy, um, but my back is is a little bent. I could have been doing a better job keeping my core in place here just for safety purposes, but we're rolling nice and slow back and forth, and right about here is where I find a knot, and I'm gonna work on that. There we go, straighten my back out so that I can put a little bit more pressure on it, keep myself in a slightly more stable position. And we're just really, really holding it there um, for about 10, maybe 15 seconds at a time. Uh, at each spot where we feel the pain and the pressure and it's one of those things where you can choose to kind of go through the pain now or you can go through a lot more pain when you guys are going and getting your deep tissue massages or for those of you that aren't doing any care whatsoever and you're not getting massages you're just going to cause your muscles to get tighter and tighter and tighter and eventually you're going to risk injury um, so it's definitely something that you want to keep up on as often as possible. And you can see here, um, this, this workout that I did, which, um, I'm not sure, depending on the release of these videos and you may or may not have seen, was very quad dominant. I didn't let my hips take over as much. And so they were definitely really tight by the end of the workout. So I get the question a lot of times, should I be foam rolling? prior to my workout or after my workout. Um, there's really no right or wrong answer. A lot of times, if I'm feeling really tight before a workout, I will foam roll beforehand. Um, and a lot of times, I will also do it afterwards. I have some issues with stretching due to my hypermobility, so foam rolling is definitely something that takes the place of that. And so I do like to do it both before and after. But there's not like a certain amount of foam rolling that will just at, at any given point be bad for you. So you can do it before or after. Um, and I even would go as far as to say that you can do it at any time during the day. So um, a lot of times I'll do it at night before I go to bed as well. Uh, working on my low back and upper back here. Um, I wasn't really focusing as hard on my back just because... Uh, short of the squats, the only movements that I did were um, press related here. So I had, as I stated earlier in this video, um, we had moved over the weekend and so my levator scapular muscles, um, the muscles that are responsible for folding the scapula up, uh, were really tight. I had tweaked something in there so I was working on the right side of my neck for that. And my right shoulder here, it's kind of hard to see from this angle, but what I'm actually working on is the rear head of my shoulder, as well as part of the lateral head. Um, and then under that, um, under the shoulder itself, you've got your lats, the upper portion of your lats that actually does attach um, or originate, I should say, into the front of your shoulder. So I'm kind of just working all of those muscles in there. And I'm just digging around and looking for different spots. So you'll know as soon as you find a knot or a tight spot um, because it will start to hurt quite a bit. And that's when you want to take your time, slow down, and apply as much pressure as you comfortably can. Um, I personally haven't heard of any stories, nor have I ever had an issue where foam rolling has caused more harm than good. It's just can be uncomfortable or painful during the experience itself. But again, it's going to help you with your recovery. It's going to help get some of that lactic acid out of the muscles. And overall, once I was done with this session, I felt way better. So right here, you can kind of see what I was had been doing on the other side. And it's not like super graceful, as you can see. So working on the rear head of that shoulder as well as my lats, um, where they just everything that kind of attaches right into that joint there, that ball and socket joint is what I'm working on and getting it nice and loosened up. My left side was definitely tighter than my right side, so I spent a little bit more time on it. Um, so here we're going to move on to some stretching. And so for me personally, the two tightest body parts that I have are my adductors, or the insides of my legs, and my hamstrings. So those are two areas that I really struggle to keep loose, despite my hypermobility, um, because I... Honestly, I couldn't tell you 
why those are the only two muscles that seem to ever be super tight on me that I can't stretch very well. Um, but it's it's where when I do stretch, I spend the majority of my time because everything else I can stretch really, really easily. So um, you may have heard of these uh, referred to as a butterfly stretch. I can say now that I'm coming back and watching the video that I wish I had been doing a better job of sitting up a little bit more straight. Um, I've definitely got a bit of a rounded back. So you want to try and sit up as straight as you possibly can while keeping your heels as close to your body as possible. So we're moving on to, um, I call these your high school running stretches, but I decided to modify this one a little bit. Instead of reaching for my right leg with my right hand, I'm um, reaching for the right side of my body with the left hand, and I'm turning my wrist in. So I'm turning that thumb down, and I'm reaching to the inside, or excuse me, I'm sorry, the outside of that leg. And what that's really doing is it's working on stretching out portions of the back. You can see really right here where my lats are getting stretched out, my obliques are getting stretched out, my shoulder, whether it's everything on the shoulder blade itself or the actual deltoid portion of the shoulder, that's all getting stretched out. Um, the left side um, leg and right side of my body were definitely a little bit tighter on that one. I couldn't reach quite as far. Um, this is one of my favorite exercises to do uh, excuse me, stretches to do uh, for getting the hips loosened up. So it's a little bit tricky on the coordination, but you want to cross, in this case, my left foot is over my right knee, and I'm reaching in between my leg and under the knee, and I'm just pulling that towards me until I feel a stretch in that left side of the hip on the glutes. And so that's really what I'm focusing on right here is, and it's going to hit a little bit of your back extensor muscles as well, but mostly, primarily, it's going to be in those hips. Um, the hip extensors, as well as your glutes. Um, so go ahead and switch sides here. I am moving through this a little bit faster than I would normally do just for the sake of recording purposes. I didn't think you guys wanted to watch me stretch for 20 minutes. Um, so I <laughs> thought that would be nice to go a little bit quicker through it for you guys. Um, but I am, I would always recommend that you hold a stretch for anywhere between 15, 20 seconds. Um, if you feel that that's uncomfortable um, to continue holding it past that, so 30 seconds to a minute, um, then definitely take a short breather and then when you move back into the stretch, try and stretch just a little bit farther than you normally would. Um, and so for my final stretch here, we're moving into, I'm just working on my adductors again, this is just a slightly different way to do it um, at a slightly different angle. I don't really have a name for these, um, we can name them whatever you want I guess, the mat stretch. Um, but what I do is I put my heels together and I'm up on my toes and I'm leaning forward and uh, I'm trying to stick my hip up as far as possible and I'm using my elbows to put outward pressure on my knees. Um, excuse the fact that my scapula are winging there really bad, but I hope you enjoyed this and I hope if you have any questions you'll let me know. All right, so my head's gonna be cut off for this, but this is Gua Sha. So I've got a couple of different tools um, that I like to use. I'm sorry, I'm setting up like two different cameras here. We're doing some Instagram video. We're doing uh, we're doing this video. So hopefully the lighting doesn't get in the way. So I'm gonna work on my forearms today. So I've got a couple things that I like to use that I prefer to use. So I have a little um, TV tray that I use here. Um, and I cover it with a towel just so that it doesn't get too dirty. I've got a couple different things. I've got a coin here, and it's actually a free uh, cherry limeade uh, token from Sonic. Uh, but I like it because it's nice and hard, it's thick, and I can get a good grip on it um, while I'm doing my scraping motions with it. The other thing that I'll use is just a plain spoon. Now they do make uh, gua sha uh, tools um, that you can order. I found them on Amazon and stuff like that. 
um, that are specifically designed for different areas of the body. Um, you don't necessarily have to have them, but they do make it uh, a lot easier, I would say, um, because the tools are designed specifically for that. But we just don't have those, so we'll use what I'm used to using. The other thing that I like to use is some um, Asper Cream uh, with Lidocaine. And the reason that I use this is, for one, it's a... It's a cream, but it's kind of a gel at the same time, so it's a lubrication. So you need something for lubrication. Um, you can use anything from Vaseline. A lot of people use Tiger Balm. The reason that I like the Asper Cream with the Lidocaine is it actually numbs my arms a little bit because when you're doing this to yourself, you have to concentrate, and so you can't just block out the pain. At least that's been my experience, so it kind of helps with the pain a little bit. Um, this definitely isn't the most pleasant sensation on the planet. So um, first thing we do here is I just get, I'm going to start with my left arm because it's the one that's bothering me the most. And I always start with the spoon because it is a deeper, um, I can put more pressure on it to get some of those bigger areas. And then I go back through um, with the coin. So, we've got the spoon. I'm going to kind of spread it, um, spread this cream around a little bit as you can see here. Let me move this so you guys can see just a little bit better what I'm doing here. So... Guys, here real quick. Get this going. There we go. Camera over a little bit. Okay, so we can kind of see we've got that going on, and so it helps to know the anatomy of what you're scraping. We're doing the gua sha on. So what I, I happen to know that from here, from this end of my elbow to this portion of my wrist, there's a tendon. That's not the super tight one. The super tight one is actually running from this end of my elbow, so the medial side of my elbow, to the lateral edge of my wrist. Okay, so if my palm is up, this would be the lateral edge. So there's an extensor tendon in here that's super tight, and it's it's giving me a lot of difficulty grasping things today. So I'm actually going to start on the top, though. I don't know why, I just always start there. And it's helpful to scrape along where you know your tendon or your sore points are. So I'm going to work on this tendon first, and then we're going to move to this side. So spread this back around. Um, I've seen it done a couple of different ways. The rule that I follow is I scrape away from the heart just because that's been um, the recommendation that I've gotten from a lot of professionals that have done this to me, um, both occupational therapists and Eastern medicine specialists. So um, here we go. So I just take my thumb, dig it in real deep, and you do apply quite a bit of pressure. Um, not to the point where it hurts so bad you want to cry, but we're just going to come in here and we're going to scrape along here. As you can see, it's starting to turn red. I'm going to get in and get some real deep action going on here. And as you can see, my arm's already starting to turn red. And part of that is um, a little bit from the scraping, the damage that we're doing. It, you know, it's, this isn't the, the lightest thing you can do to your body as far as recovery techniques go. But also what we're getting um, in some of the darker spots that you'll see pop up here in just a second is those toxins that have been just plaguing me for a couple days. So here we go. We're getting it, getting it. Oh, there we go, nice. And I can tell because of the pressure, when you run this over your hand, you'll be able to feel, I'm sorry, your arm, or wherever you're doing it, you'll be able to feel pressure on that tendon. Um, if you're doing it to somebody else, you'll definitely still be able to feel tightness and a lot of fluid buildup. There's a lot of fluid built up right here, I can feel. So I'm gonna kind of scrape this back on here. And we're gonna keep going. I'm really going to dig into this spot right here because I can feel that's where it wants to come out. So we're going to come along the edge here. And we're going to scrape all the way to my wrist here. So we're coming into the wrist now. And right along here is where I'm feeling a lot of this because that's where that tendon's coming in. It's attaching right here on the edge of my wrist. So come in here. Short strokes. Again, I'm scraping away from my heart. So I'm not scraping back and forth. I'm just scraping forward. A lot of that in there. Move some of the lubrication over to here. Kind of dig in here. All right, so go ahead and get in some more right here. So you can see, if I get real close there, it looks like um, I've been beaten a little bit. But again, all this is there's no there's no need for concern. This isn't bruising or anything. This is just toxins coming to the surface, which is one of the reasons I have such a large <laughs> quantity of water today because I'm going to need that to flush out all these toxins that I'm bringing to the top. So I'm bringing them out of the cavity and into 
um, into the areas, back into the blood vessels where they can be flushed away um, by all the water in your system. So, I'm going to kind of work a little bit more on this side. And there we go. And I can feel the tension already leaving. So, um, I'm going to kind of, I don't know if you guys can see that real well, I'm working just on that very edge and right in here, if I get in there nice and good, get in there nice and good, oh yeah. So you can kind of see right here where I was scraping there's some toxins and that lines up perfectly if you notice this line comes all the way across my arm um, diagonally and that's where that tendon is that's sore. Now that's not the main tendon that's sore so we're going to move on to that next. Um, we're going to apply a little bit more Asper cream here just because some of it's been rubbed into my skin a little bit. I don't like to rub it around with my fingers as much as possible because then your hand gets greasy and it's really hard to hold onto the spoon at that point. So, the next spot that I know is really tight is going to be in through this area here, and it's going to come from the attachment here, and it's going to come around and insert into my wrist over here. So we're going to just kind of start to scrape this cavity, and oh my god, I can already feel it. So just that little bit of light scraping, I don't know if you guys can see this very well or not, just that little bit of light scraping right there has turned that red already. So I'm just going to keep going. And this is the one that I know is very, very tight. It's the one um, that I definitely strained during the move over the weekend. And I just didn't have time to do this yesterday. So, again, that's kind of why we did the legs today. So I'm going to kind of just keep going. Point this down just a little bit more for you guys. There we go. So I'm just going to keep going. So we've gotten some, some redness there. So what I'm going to do now is get in nice and deep. So I'm really going to dig in and be a little bit rough. Again, this isn't the most pleasant sensation in the world. It does hurt a little bit. Um, I don't know what to tell you other than kind of suck it up. Now, you can have this done. Again, there's lots of people. If you Google Gua Sha, it's uh, G-U-A-S-H-A. Um, you can find a lot, of, a lot of acupuncture offices, a lot of Eastern medicine specialists uh, will perform this for you. But it's expensive. I mean, it's not expensive. Usually, I've seen treatments run around $45, um, but it's not something you can just do one time, especially if you've got a lot of toxin buildup. It's something that has to be repeated, so it can add up rather quickly. tendon tear, tendon line, and you can see, if I flex, see these two tendons right here? It's kind of hard to tell in the video, but there's two tendons that run right here, and that's exactly where all those toxins are coming up, so those are all sub, um, deep into that ca uh, canal that runs through your arm, where all those tendons and all the toxins are stored. So, I've done quite a bit of scraping with the uh, spoon. So now I'm going to come back through. I'm going to spread this back out with my spoon again here. Get a little bit more on there. So get that nice and worked up. So this part's a little bit harder with a coin because you will inevitably get some of the cream on your hand and so it becomes a little bit difficult to grip. But I like to just come in here and really work some of these other areas that that spoon doesn't necessarily like to go. And the nice thing about this, I can just kind of wipe that off there, but the nice thing is, is I don't have to just scrape this way. I can get in here and I can scrape kind of sideways. And when I do that, I'm getting into those smaller areas. So really just getting those toxins out of there now. So if I scrape in this area right here in my wrist, oh, my camera twisted on me. Sorry about that, guys. All right. So, one of the areas that I can get into real nice with this is this right here on my wrist. Right here is kind of hard for that spoon to get into. And so I can kind of just scrape that with this coin turned sideways. That's the reason I like the coin. Um, I've actually had uh, wooden spoons. Um, a deep wooden spoon I've, I've had people use on me. Um, I've had... Uh, just the cap off of a 
bottle of, uh, or a, a jar of Tiger Balm. I've had that used on me before. And so it just kind of depends and differs. So, um, quite honestly, I'm going to go over this edge just one more time here because I didn't get this with the coin. But um, I don't want to do too much just because it, it does hurt. Um, it's not very comfortable to do this. And I don't want to overdo it. The f the f this is going to need to be repeated probably in... As soon as this starts to disappear is when I'm going to do it again. So probably in about four to five days, I'll come back through here and do this one more time. Oh, yeah, see that right there. Oh, we've just got some new new area to pop up there. So again, um, four or five days, I'll probably do this again and get rid of whatever is left in there. But bringing too much of it to the surface at once um, can be really painful and leave you sore the next day versus finding, you know, some relief. So, alright. Wipe off my tools here. Wipe my coin down. So, I would venture to guess, and this is just a guess, but my left arm was very tight. And so I'm going to guess that that arm, this left arm, is going to be the most um, that you'll see out of this. So you can kind of see right there, and it comes all the way around, let's see if we can get a good, take this off here, it comes all the way around, I've got this really bright light in my way here, so it comes all the way around to here, so, and you can kind of see as I flex my, my hand here, those two tendons right there, real close in here, that's where a lot of the, um, the build up was, and so, People always ask, well, how do you know it's working? Well, those two tendons right there show me that that's where the pain was. So I've wiped my arm off. Um, I'm actually, when we get done with this side, I'm going to tape this side. But actually, you need to wash it off first uh, because KT tape, kinesiology tape, won't stick um, to surfaces that have been, um, you know, asper cream or whatnot. So I'm going to start with a clean surface here again. I can actually already feel the difference, and so I'm gripping a lot stronger. I wish I had like a, a grip strength uh, meter to show you guys the difference that um, that I get from this. Let's level this out just a little bit there. Okay, so we're gonna go back over to this side, and again, I'm just gonna, gonna come in here with this, squirt it around a little bit. We're gonna start again with that spoon. I'm definitely going to look into ordering some specific tools for this uh, in the near future because it is something that recently I've started doing a lot on my own. Um, so, definitely going to look into that. So, got it nice and lubed up there. <laughs> Wipe off the back of the spoon so I can grip it. And we're just going to start again from this, el this edge of the elbow, um, which is that medial side. It's going to come all the way over here. I'm sorry, the lateral side of the elbow, the outside of the elbow, to the medial edge of the wrist. Okay, so I'm going to come in here, get some nice scrapage in, and again, I can already see where that's going to go. So I'm coming in here. Again, we're going from this edge of the elbow over to this side of the wrist. Scrape that out. It's already starting to turn red, as you can see there. I'm going to get in some video here on my Instagram, so I apologize, I'm going to... There's too many damn social medias, I'm telling you. Whoop. I don't have my tripod screwed down all the way, so the camera keeps... <laughs> camera keeps slipping. Okay. So I'm going to set that up, hit record. So I'm going to come back in, so as you guys can see, through here it's already turned nice and red. Um, I'm going to scrape again away from the heart. I'm not scraping backwards. I'm only scraping forward. I'm going to come in here and really get some of this loose. And actually, oddly enough, this side appears to be have a little bit more um, 
than my left side did. So we'll come back through here. And again, don't be concerned about this red marking. There's nothing wrong with this. This is just the toxins coming to the surface. I'm going to use my Asper cream here a little bit more. And uh, I'm running low on that. I need to go get some more. So I'm going to come back in and really see if I can get... Oh, yeah. Yeah, that feels great. And again, this isn't the most comfortable thing in the world. But as you can see, this is all toxins coming to the surface. So definitely um, going to drink a ton of water to flush that out. And we will feel better by tomorrow. So, we've gotten this side. This is about all I'm going to do for this because this was so much that came to the surface. Um, this is all I'm going to do for right here. I, I am going to go back over it with a coin, but that's all I'm going to do with just the spoon. And so we're going to take... So now we want to run from this tendon right here up into this edge of the wrist. And as you can see... Maybe not... As you can see, there we go. So these are the tendons that I'm going to be working on, and they run to this edge of the elbow. So I'm just going to put my cream back on, wipe my finger off here, let's see if I can get a little bit more out of this bottle. There we go. Yeah, that's almost dead. So we'll come in here, right over my tattoo. Uh, if you guys have tattoos, I haven't had any issues with this scraping anything off. Um, I don't know if anybody else has ever had an issue with that. I personally have not, so that's all I can say there. So again, I'm starting at this edge of the elbow, and I'm coming across to the wrist. So it's a diagonal crossover, okay? Because this is where all the toxins are going to be stored. I might get a little bit out of here, but not a whole lot. We've got to go in between where the bones are and right onto those tendons. So as you can see, this is not as bad, but we're still getting some over here by the elbow. So, there we go. My phone's just over here taking freaking pictures of the ceiling. Alright, sorry, back to reality. So here we go. Get a little bit in there. I'm gonna scrape this nice and deep. Really dig that in there. Um, I have in the past as well gone all the way up into my hands and actually across my fingers. I'm not gonna do that today just because I don't feel like it, <laughs> to be honest. I mean, this already hurts enough um, as it is. Kind of come around. I'm feeling a little bit of tightness in this back edge. So I'm going to see if I can get a little bit to come out of here. Again, I just broke my own rule of spreading with my fingers, but whatever. I'm going to kind of come through here and see if we can get anything to appear. So there's another cavity right here that runs in the back of your arm. The back of your forearm, I should say. Sometimes you can get a little bit to come out of. I'm just scrape in there. And so we got a little bit out of there. Not enough um, to be too concerned about. So... Um, I'm actually, may or may not, I'm out of cream, so we're actually going to skip the coin uh, for this side. It's okay, I got quite a bit out of it, so go ahead and take this off this tripod real quick. One sec. Alright, so we've got all of this in here that we've gotten out of there, and again, right on those two tendons right there. We've got this side of the arm, running from that edge of the elbow all the way over into the wrist. Again, right through that canal that runs into the hand. And then if we look at this side, same thing. So we've got outside of the elbow to the inside wrist, and then the inside of the elbow to the outside of the wrist, in through here. And I apologize, it's really bright in this room. Um, but yeah, definitely got quite a bit out of there.